Hi there, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at creating uh, this point cloud effect in Touch Designer uh, with a few different little options uh, that we can sort of cycle through like so. Um, this tutorial will attempt to be beginner friendly um, and hopefully be reasonably quick. So we won't be going over anything fundamentally new in this video, but uh, I hope this is still useful for you more seasoned veterans. As always, this project file is available for download as is on my Patreon below. For just a few bucks a month, you get access to every project file I do for a video for, as well as the different tiers for people that, you know, um, can't afford it or for people that want to pay more to access more premium files of my own. Um, let's dive into today's tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is get a point cloud file. Now, if you don't have one of these, like a 3D scan that you've done with your phone, there's a lot of apps you can download. You can also go ahead and press tab and get a point file in, and there will be some default ones that you can select from here. So we can do a banana sphere. Um, I'm going to use my own scan. There's also many websites where you can download very cool ones as well. Um, from there, we want to just instance this geometry. So I'm going to connect this to a null. And then on this point file in, we also want to make sure we set red to be, uh, well, I've actually got it mis-entered here. Um, so I'm just going to bring this one woo, down from up the top. I make sure red is set to X, green, Y, and then Z, blue. And we drag it into a null. And you should see here, uh, the information encoded for our point cloud uh, in a RGB format, which will be used to instance geometry. In order to get the color from this one, we want to get a point file select, like so, and drag and drop on here. Now, uh, regular point clouds, when you click these drop downs, you will see an R, G, and a B, so you can assign red, green, blue, like that. For what I'm using is a Gaussian splat, so I need to do the F, C, D options, and then 0, 1, 2 like so. Now, uh, don't worry, you will only see these options if you know what a Gaussian splat is, and if you don't, don't worry about it whatsoever. Uh, next, we want to connect this one to a null, drag it out like so. Uh, you can see here that our colors are quite saturated, so uh, just to desaturate it a little bit, you could do a level. Um, I'm going to instead just do a constant, like so and then drag the alpha level down a little bit. Uh, and we'll see this better once we render it out, but um, yeah, that's just because it is a little bit uh, saturated. Okay, cool. So the next thing we wanna do is get some geometry. Now, we're gonna do a particle system. There's a lot of different ways we can do this. However, for, however, for today's video, I wanna have some variety on the control um, so I'm going to do a circle and then connect this to a transform. Uh, normally when we do a particle system, we might do an add, uh, but then we can't really change the size and shapes of the individual particles. By using a 2D circle here and a transform, we can set the scale to 001, 0.001 like so. And then we can also sort of change the scale and keep it render, keep the computational level quite low as it's just a simple 2D shape. Uh, the next thing we want to do is just go ahead and connect this to a geometry. So we can right click here and type in geometry under comp. Boom. Uh, now I'm going to grab the other default rendering components like a light and a camera and then a render top. We also need a constant under materials. You could use um, any one of these materials if you want to explore, but I'm just going to use a constant and drag and drop it on like so. I'm going to quickly define all this into the render like this, but you probably won't need to do this. And then we can connect this out to a null and then do a blue to display it as background. Now we don't see anything here, so I might try and make the on the transform. Yeah, there we go. So we can see our dot, singular dot here. Um, this might end up being too big, but that's all good. We can leave this now as an example. Um, so we are rendering a singular dot, and essentially we want to use the information from these nulls to render out this dot 
in the positions where they are particles or points. The way we do that is by clicking on geometry, then going to our instancing tab and turning this on. Then our first null here, the one with the position data, we want to drag on to the translate OP and then set the XYZ to be R, G and B. Um, you can see here it's quite big, so I might go back down to our transform. Um, I'm also just going to disable the uh, first render so we get some of the power back. And I'm going to add in another zero again, which is going to give us a much smaller, you know, individual dot. Like so. Cool. Um, so that is our point cloud. To get the color, we can go over to our instance um, 2. And then we have our color OP down the bottom and set the uh, RGB to be R and then G and then B, like so. And you can see here again, the color's not quite right. So maybe you want to drag the constant up. Maybe you want to leave it as is. Um, you could play with the constant here of this or turn on blending transparency and then play around with the light if you want to do so. I'm not really going to get into any of that for today's video. It's worth noting that um, point clouds will be orientated in weird ways uh, like as it is right now. Um, so you, you will probably want to go into the transform tab and then um, for example type in negative 180 uh, which is not on the right axes but here. But you don't really need to do any of what I'm doing right now. Um, this is simply me adjusting for my point cloud uh, you will just want to adjust yours uh, your positioning based on well your own point cloud uh, so now let's just do in between the render and the null we can add in a RGB key which is going to give us a nice black background uh, and then here is another situation where you might want to play with the color drag the alpha back up um, you might want to make, play with the size of the particle, make it a little bit bigger, maybe 002, like so. Yeah, all is seeming well. Uh, I am just going to make sure we didn't leave anything off. I don't think we did. Um, I'm cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So the next thing we want to do is I'm going to delete this just so we get some more power and then also is um, create the um, square and the text and the blur. So essentially what is going on is we are doing two passes, um, one that goes into a rectangle uh, which blocks out an area of the image where we don't want to do any blurring or displacing and then we displace that with the original image and then we add in the rectangle over the top um, to sort of put emphasis on the area where we haven't displaced the image. Uh, so if that didn't make sense to you, don't worry, we're gonna go over it just now. Um, another thing you might wanna do really quick is under the rotate tab on any one of these axes really, but I might do it on the um, Y here is type in ABS and then capital T time dot seconds. And then usually for geometry rotation, I will multiply this by 10 just to make it a little bit faster. Uh, and you can see this just does a slow pan of the geometry like so, which is quite cool. Cool, so let's go ahead and add in the displacement. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a rectangle. Um, now, if you want to do the touch design of blob tracking, um, you could, you'll need to take the information and then render out the blob separately and then do the same effect. I won't be doing that in this tutorial as I'm trying to keep it quite condensed and short. Uh, but if you sort of understand what it is that I'm saying here and that intrigues you, let me know and I would love to do a tutorial on that also. Uh, but just with this blob today, we're gonna scale this down. Um, beginner tip, the way I'm doing this is by holding down my middle mouse and then sliding left or right. Um, I also might want to zoom in on my camera. So on my camera, if I go to view, I could try like an orthographic view. If I want to do everything sort of scaled to the same size, 
um, perspective works as well. So maybe on view and then just zoom in like so. Yeah, that's cool. And then um, again, we can translate these. Ooh. Uh, it's probably easier to just translate the geometry like that and then put the sort of head over the square like so. Again, you might not be using a person in this situation um, and you may not even want to use a rectangle. We might want to use a sphere or a different shape. Um, but I like where this rectangle is sitting, so that is good for now. What I'm going to do is hide the background so it's a little bit easier to follow. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and do a displace. So if we connect this into a displace and then plug this initial render into it and then our rectangle in, you can see we're getting some freaky results. Even if we set this to mirror, it's just going to be um, you sort of got the effects that we're looking for going on here, but not really to the level we would like. Uh, so some elements we can add in is say a slope. Um, this will give us more control over the displacement. And then before the slope, we might want to go into our palette tools and under image filters, get a feedback edge. Plug that in, plug that in like so. This is going to create a sort of like fading effect, which is going to result in a kind of liquidy kind of look. Um, now you might not like this little square displacement that's going on. We can just turn off the edge like so. And then again, play with these parameters um, to sort of get a look that you like. You might want to turn the source game really up. And then with the slope here, you might want to even increase the strength on that, make it very intense. It's really up to you how you stylize this. You can see the rectangle is um, very displaced now, but if I actually make, sorry, show the null. Um, also, it, it might be worth you making this background white. I could insert another rectangle here and size it up and then set the output, swap those over. If you prefer that look, yeah. Um, but essentially, you just want to now play around with the um, feedback and the slope to create a sort of a blurred look that you really like. Um, I have obviously the exact look f that I had at the beginning available for the download, um, but it was really just me tweaking these parameters until I got it to look the way I wanted it to. Just gonna change this to a black black background again. Um, so now to get the uh, white outline, we can pretty much just copy this rectangle and paste it. Uh, and then on the output, set it to just resolution so we get the singular square. We can then grab an edge, which is going to edge it and give us these nice edges. Uh, and then after the displace, before the rectangle, we can insert a comp comp for composite, drag this on like so, and then set it to add. And you can see here that we have a nice square outline. Uh, this is also where I was playing at the beginning with different overlay techniques. So if I disable this edge like so, you can see we just get a blacked out area. What you might want to do is set this to be like mm, difference, if I can find that. Uh, which will invert everything in the box uh, and then you can play around with a bunch of different options but for the sake of simplicity we're going to keep it like that and then to finish all off I inserted a text like so you can type in whatever it is you want like tutorial you can set the font up here you can also use your own um, fonts by dragging and dropping it into the font file like so and then it's just using the position here to uh, position it, you want to use quite big values, so let's drag it down. In fact, we can scale this down a little bit and then drag that one down, like so, and go a little bit further down, and then a little bit to the right. You could even just align it center, like so. And yeah. Um, obviously this was a rushed job. I wanted to challenge myself with a quick beginner video today um, that could be easily followed along in a pragmatic kind of way. Uh, but you now have the tools, if you followed this tutorial, to um, go ahead and play with this project file and refine it and craft it and sort of come up with whatever look that you like. 
Uh, you can change the rectangle size. You can do those different um, inversion techniques, like I was saying. It is really up to you what you do now. But yeah, if you liked today's video, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, um, I will see you on the next one. All suggestions for ideas and project files are welcome. And that's about it. <laughs> see you later.